Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I've been wanting to make my personal gaming PC tiny for the longest time. The big tower for my purpose-built gaming PC has just been taking up too much space in my office and I didn't need all of that extra case space for literally a motherboard, a cooler, a GPU and an M.2. At Computex this year, we checked out Leon Lee's booth and they showed us their brand new TU-150 and I knew the second that I saw it that I wanted it for my new personal gaming rig. In this video, I built myself a PC. It's not very often that I get to build myself a PC that I get to use for whatever I want. So yeah, I had to make the most of it. You're about to see me build my tiny little baby computer that I'm gonna use for gaming. And now this is a little bit of uh, it's a bit of an educational piece to show you why bigger and higher spec PCs are just not always better. This is a permanent system for me and it's my gaming PC. And with that said, we obviously did all of the gaming benchmarks and we did thermal torture testing to show you guys how this machine performed. So stick around to a little bit later to see how it did. Also, make sure you watch the video all the way to the end because we've been getting a lot of comments about things in our builds that are almost always answered in the video if you just watch it all the way to the end. So yeah, just a heads up. Also, there's a PC part picker list in the description for those who are keen to see what all the parts are and you want to see how much it costs. But anyway, I'm going to shut up because now you get to see me build my new gaming PC. Let's do it.
Let's talk past because I'm pretty sure you guys will want to know. The motherboard is the brand new ASRock Phantom Gaming X570 ITX TB3. This is a little beast of an ITX board with a 10 phase VRM, Thunderbolt 3 and Intel cooler mounting. The CPU story is a little bit of a complicated one. The AMD Ryzen 9 3900X was the CPU you saw us building with. The 3900X is the CPU that all of the testing was done with, but it ran way too hot in this system with the cooler setup. And as you're about to see, it uh, got munched by all of the torture testing. Now, we can't use the stock cooler with this motherboard since it's got Intel cooler mounting and it doesn't have any of the standard AM4 mounting stuff. I needed to know if it could be cooled by a 120mm AIO for future projects. The CPU I ended up swapping into this to be in there permanently was the Ryzen 5 3600X. Now, I was going to go with the Ryzen 5 3600, but no one has stock in Sydney at the moment, so I couldn't buy one. To cool the 3900X and the 3600X, we use the Corsair H60 in a push-pull configuration. It's a 120mm AIO cooler that, as you're about to see, can cool the 3900X, but not very well. I won't even get started on the NZXT M22 that we bench tested with the 3900X. Don't use that cooler for anything. The GPU we use is the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Super Gaming OC. I picked this GPU because it fits in the case nicely and it's got plenty of room and I only play games at 144 hertz in 1440p, so it's perfect for it. The RAM we use is 16 gigs of Team Group Delta RGB at 3200 megahertz. I'll probably swap this RAM out in a few weeks, but it's all I had on hand to get this system up and running. Lastly, the case, it's the brand new Leon Lee 2U150. This case is a portable style mini ITX case with a magnetic handle on the top. It's, it's really a return to form for Leon Lee. If you know anything about Leon Lee, in the late 90s and early 2000s, Leon Lee was famous for making aluminium cases like the Leon Lee PC60, and the TU150 is a real return to form with that design language. And I really like it. And that's what really stood out to me when I saw it at Computex. Cable management is really good for an ITX case and you can run most of the cables in the top of the case, which is a really nice idea. I like that I could use the top to hide the cable extensions and most of the chunky power cables. I think I'm gonna swap all of the cables out to fully sleeve cables soon. But yeah, as you're about to see in this video, I just did it as fast as I could just so we could get it out so you guys can see it. So we just use extensions for now. Also be aware that this case only supports SFX and SFX LPSUs. Airflow appears to be decent enough, but like I mentioned, if you're wanting to do something crazy like a 3900X with a 120mm AIO, uh, I probably wouldn't recommend it in this case. We decided on this testing hardware basically because it's about as close to worst case scenario as possible. So we did all of the hard work for you. We swapped all the fans to Noctua fans and used the stock Corsair fans and all the temps are about the same regardless of the fans, the fan placement, the fan configuration, the AIO placement, just anything. We tested both open case, closed case with all the panels on and off, including removing all the filters and the difference was around five degrees between everything being on and off. If you're wanting to build a Ryzen system in this case, I reckon the 3700X would be pushing it. The 3600X is probably better suited for this case and the 3600 would be around the sweet spot if you wanted to go down that 120 mil AIO route. Stock cooling though, uh, I don't know. Uh, we don't have another AM4 mini ITX board at the moment with stock cooler mounting, so uh, we, we don't know how it would perform. Overall, the case is excellent. It's easy to build in. It's fairly small. And regardless of what other reviewers will probably say about it, I think Leon Lee nailed it. And uh, I think they nailed it because of my use case. It's, it's pretty perfect. I have it in my office for gaming, but if I want to pick it up and move it to the living room to play VR, it's really easy. And yeah, I just like the case. It's a great looking case and it performs pretty well. Okay, let's talk about fans, lighting and aesthetics and because everyone loves that stuff. The cable extensions are the black and white paracord cooler master ones. The fans that were used were three of the new Leon Lee Bora digital fans connected directly to the ARGB header on the motherboard and all the lighting was configured in polychrome sync. Okay, it's benchmarking time. Just be aware that I didn't test this system with every game on earth because there's not enough hours in the day. I used our usual speed of benchmarks so you can go back to our older videos and compare this system to those as well. So let's see how it did.
This build actually turned out really nice. I'm really happy with the performance. I'm glad I swapped the CPU out for something a little bit more conservative and I'll probably drop it down to a 3600 when stock becomes available again so I can use the 3600X for other builds on the channel. If you're interested in any of the parts in this build, there are links down below in the description uh, along with a PC part picker list too if you're interested. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And uh, yeah, we waited until the embargo lifted on this to actually talk about the case. Unlike some other media who ignored us. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.